Hi there, I'm David and welcome to another episode of Camera Peeps and we are more than happy to welcome back our colleague Andre. Good to be back. Welcome. And today, Andre, you've brought in uh, something else from your collection. Yeah, I've brought in a what they call a laptop video editor and this is made by Sony mm. and uh, it was to revolutionise portability of editing with videotape. So this particular one here came out around about 2000. Um, prior to that, if we can just go up to our slides, um, a minimal size edit suite was something like that. So you had, uh, as an absolute minimum, two 19-inch inch rack mounted machines. And you also had uh, a couple of monitors and speakers and things like that. So it was quite a bit to sort of move. So the idea of this system was to actually be able to edit out on the field. Now, the advantage of being able to edit remotely were the fact that you didn't have to tie up satellite time, for example, for news to send back lots of unedited vision. So that meant you could cut things down and you could also get news reports updated on site. So this is the first thing that came out. Now, it took uh, the Betacam tapes. So basically, uh, Sony developed the SX system. The yellow one. Which, yeah, which was uh, to, uh, sort of like a a downgraded version of digital beta cam and it also meant that you could get more recording time so an average uh, tape like this would give you 60 minutes and that was uh, an improvement over the sp tapes which only gave you 30 minutes now you can use sp tapes in the system and uh, and that was uh, important at the time because uh, in, in the late 1980s when a lot of the tv stations uh, did have uh, did change to SP um, that obviously the libraries the tape libraries were full of SP That's tapes right, and, and they would have had pallet loads of SP correct. tapes for, yeah, for so going out on the road so the fact that they could yeah well Betacam revolutionised the getting smaller of the video tape system so it was all about getting more for less type of things so anyhow the standard SP Betacam became 30 minutes so we can use these so how these tapes went into this machine basically you had to pull the machine apart and put the tapes in like so. So this particular one you had to crunch it down and put them in. And then like the previous photo we had a look at, this is two VTRs in one. These actually came in two halves. So what you did is you put the two halves together so you had a player and a recorder side. So in this particular example we've set it up so that we can dub from the player side to the recorder side. So we could we could use uh, assemble in and insert editing and uh, we could run it from there and you could adjust the audio levels. So, so can I just throw in a question? Yeah, so sure. this is about 2000? About that, 2000, right? yes. So non linear yeah. editing was probably still in its early phases. Yeah, it was. It, the transitional stage was starting to happen. We yeah. had to let go of the video tapes and get mm. into the laptop, which mm -hmm. you've got here. Yeah. You can now perform. 10 times more powerful editing functions than what this could ever do. But at the time, I mean, I remember um, when, if a big enough uh, news event happened, they did actually have road cases for those VVU 800s correct, and yeah. CRT monitors, and they took and the scene and flew them overseas, that's right. which is pretty incredible. So this must have changed. So this, this being uh, like a small suitcase case size unit was quite revolutionary mm. in that it could actually run portable it didn't need any power it was completely self-contained on these two batteries these v-lock batteries mm -hmm. the the infolivium batteries were the latest mm -hmm. power storage device which was quite amazing because i had to go on a trip with you as you remember i do and, I and we did the centenary of federation and that's, that's me back in around about 2001. you haven't changed a bit yeah. <laughs> and we didn't have to fight you're just being a bit too nice there yeah. david yeah. <laughs> but that is a legitimate job we were doing yeah. for the centenary of federation and what we were doing there david you were the cameraman well there was three i think there was two or three camera people there was and but you were one of them and was, you were yeah. the main coordinator of getting the tapes back to me and yep. what I had to do with this same system here is I had to out of these ongoing speeches they had we had to cut down enough vision to go back to the ABC in Melbourne so as they could use it in their news well my recollection was that um, because the event happened on the border of New South Wales and Victoria and I do recall that it was over a weekend. That's correct. And yeah. that typically is when TV stations run lean with news crews. So we were actually working for the organisation themselves and mm. it was a pool situation. So my recollection was that we were just crunching down uh, footage 
and we literally had to drive to the local TV station to, to play it out. And I yeah. do recall there was quite an interest uh, in, in this story. Well, that's right. Yeah. And you were between three cameramen. I mean, I was getting... Uh, you know, a few hours of footage and afternoons. So that that's quite a bit to and have you to couldn't cut just, down. You just couldn't put a, a, your mouse on the on the play bar and drag it across. No, you physically and you go. had no undo. Mm. You just simply had to spool mm. through the tape like I am here. And uh, this is this is just some footage we had in the machine. But um, you had to physically go through, pick out the bits you require, dub it off, and then you'd uh, basically pre-roll it all, put it in, and do, select the different edit modes that you actually needed. So. You know, it was a pretty convoluted sort of a thing. It's funny how in the camera world there's a bit of a joke going around at the moment that um, the saying is everyone's a DOP until they have to pull out a light meter. And I would say this editing, um, this old school editing, um, a lot of people would probably struggle with. Well, they wouldn't be able to do it. And the thing, yeah. David, is there was no undo. No. So you did the edit, you mm. did it. Otherwise, you had to go right back yeah, right. through and go through the whole process again. But we had to cut down these camera tapes, as yes. I recall, to actually get them to play out to the network. Mm. So we'd have to go and find a play out point. Yes. So we had to pick this up yep. and we were able to go to a play out point, which is generally a GPO, connect it up mm. and play out these bits of footage. So out of that, say, let's say we had three hours of footage, I had to get it down to about two or three minutes of the best stuff. Mm. So then when it got sent back to the station, they could then pick out the best 30 seconds out of it. And, and I would say now, um, reflecting on, on this stuff, that um, I can see why the editors of your era or our era are much sought after. I notice, you know, in big productions now because they're used to working fast and, and, and understand yeah. the importance of time. To, to That's get correct. Yeah. yeah. So this was interesting. Now, this the other revolutionary thing about this at the time was we actually had to get from where we were shooting to the GPO, which all the post offices had a play out terminal, which went through Telstra and or Telecom as it were. So can, I, can I just throw in one question yeah. there? Because that was an analog input uh, correct and, and you had to take your uh, five pin yes uh, to split out to that's XLR. correct so this has yeah. an analog output yep this has sdi it's yep. only standard definition so that was a revolutionary thing too the fact that it had sdi mm -hmm. in and out and it had analog in and yep. out yeah so it was quite versatile mm -hmm. and the fact that it could play the sp tapes as well as the, the sx ones it yep. meant it was very versatile so there's a lot of things you could do the other thing i had to do with one of these once was actually convert a composite video signal to SDI and that this could actually do oh, it. so it cross converts. Yeah, so okay. it actually had to do that in one particular because situation. Because sometimes um, before the whole smartphone thing, a lot of people yeah. would shoot, shoot um, stringers in regional areas would shoot something on a handy cam That's or something. That's correct, yeah. And the news crews would turn up and say, well, how do we convert this to videotape? Right. So this was obviously So this was to, this had yeah. a few other advantages that people sort of invented along the mm. way. So mm. I had actually used this particular machine to convert composite to SDI mm -hmm. digital to get it into a system. So they were quite a clever thing for their time. It's got a little audio mixer in it so you could do all the audio levels mm -hmm. and uh, you could split the tracks that had four audio channels so you could actually independently edit each channel if you had to do that. So it wouldn't be very good for a major serious production but if you're out on the go mm -hmm. on a news story that'd be great as is when we had to go from one location of shooting to a play out point. I was actually on the bus editing with mm -hmm. this and people were staring at this mm -hmm. thing wondering what is he doing? Well, I, I can imagine when this would have been launched um, at NAB in Las Vegas. That was probably it, it, huge news. It was huge. Yeah. And uh, the fact that we're down to a little laptop now that can do tens of more, it's quite, and that's only a period of what, you know, 10 mm. plus years. Yeah. So things have changed. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's too many of these survive, and this one is actually working perfectly. And well, um, well, also, um, another um, testament to their build quality is. Um, they were split in half and they were often put in link vans. That's correct. So yes. they really spent their life getting bounced around, life, literally life yeah. on the road getting bounced around. Well this one, uh, if you look at it carefully, it was actually uh, cut in half mm -hmm. and it was sent out to two different locations but it's now been put back together yeah. again as an edit suite and there yeah. is, like the studio ones, there's a nine pin mm -hmm. protocol system which mm -hmm talks they, they each talk to each other for doing all the pre-roll and insert edits but I think the most strangest thing is the fact that the panels come up and the tapes have to actually go underneath and it makes that 
horrible crunching sound to which goes against everything put, we were taught don't that's force right the tape. be gentle yeah. with it don't yeah, force yeah. it but you have to put it down with a fair bit of pressure mm. but um you know it, it works and uh, i think that was just an interesting little bit Absolutely. of past and I'm, and I'm looking, technology yes and i'm looking at the back of it now so it's got the um uh, the machine control, what is it, the RS? What's it's the got the, uh, the normal nine pin protocol yeah. connector. And yeah. uh, lots of um, XLR yes, you can audios get composite in and out. Component, all sorts of things. So, I mean, you could have, if so. you had to, if, it, if an edit suite broke down in the newsroom, you could literally just pull this out. Well, you could do yeah, a lot with it. But and did it have that, what is it, the dynamic tracking heads or whatever where you could pause um, it? Only with the SX tape. So, I've only got okay. SP tapes in at the moment. I didn't bring any SX ones, and unfortunately. But as you, if you can see on the overhead shot here, that you can actually see that it's actually breaking up when it's yeah. in search mode. But yes. SX clean frames, you can even do slow motions and still frame edit master copies. But, but that um, that perfect freeze frame could have been important. You, and in the news environment, you have to think of everything that could happen. Well, that, that's And right. if you did have to um, play a story out on location, the fact that the directors would have been very happy that it was queued up on a nice clean. Yeah, I mean, thought. you could roll live on location yeah. with this, but of course you'd have delay issues. But mm. I mean, like I was saying before, it was really about cutting the bulk of stuff down. But even the LCD screens in those days would have been... Well, yeah, this is... Yeah. You'll probably notice too, it's 4x3. I oh, know, so what happens which, if... If it's 16 by 9 you just have to watch it squash. Oh, really? Oh, there's yeah, no... There's no okay. Well, I, I think there is an adjustment in there, yeah, but okay. I've, I've only used it for 4x3 applications because mm. it really only had a very short life mm. because the laptops came out mm -hmm. and... Uh, I and mean, memory got cheaper. Who would and, carry yeah. this around? <laughs> True. <laughs> when True. you've got a laptop and uh, the batteries were the other thing, you could, uh, I think you could get probably about an hour and a half mm -hmm. out of the batteries, but each unit was individually powered. So I noticed or, that power, there's no um, kettle cord or jug plug. No, so you could plug a standard camera power supply into it. It had to be four pin, but you would have needed a yeah. um, power supply yeah, to convert well, the, mains to 12 volt. Correct, and yeah. look, you could get, you could, get one of those mm. or run it off a 12 mm. volt system yeah, okay. a standard 12 volt the same as what the cameras and the monitors mm. had you could actually do that i'm sure uh, around the world i'm sure people were connecting them to car batteries and cigarette lighters and things to to get them they to definitely work. did in fact yeah. i'd done that myself on one occasion oh. because we were using this as a field recorder and the other good thing about this was both sides can record mm. so you could do a dual recording on location so if you did get a fail you've still got the other mm. one so that was very handy um how many hours would you get out of the set of heads because the sx that was one of their um really strong features well i've used this for other applications other than portable and yep. it's gone for hours that's yeah, all okay. i can say and i've only had a head clog was about the worst thing that's happened yeah, okay. putting an old tape in but mm. uh, generally speaking quite reliable mm, great and uh is this getting any use to get people calling you up for <laughs> sx dubs? it got used for one sort of application it was for a movie that they needed something Perfect. a period of time because uh just no one seemed to have one yeah and okay. i think we only got a few in the country here because as i was saying earlier mm. it was really in and out and mm. we we're onto the yeah, solid I, state I, I, stuff I pretty quick but this is like an interim period and i think they made a digi beta version of this half half i rate. believe they did yeah. i've never actually seen oh, one okay. because uh i think by the time it mm. sort of came out it was as I say again, we're back onto the solid state mm -hmm. laptops and like who would want to carry this around. And can you just clarify again, what were the, um, what was the procedure? There was assemble edit and Assemble insert. edit and insert edit. Yes. With this particular one, you could do, it's the same as what the standard edit suite would do with the Betacamp systems. So assemble edit meaning a non-blacked tape if you want to use the term or non-control track encoded tape. You could assemble edit on nothing or you could have an encoded tape and insert video or four separate audio channels okay but if you didn't do that it wouldn't work because you get all the disturbances sure all right and uh that was yeah it was revolutionary for its time okay well i'm sure um there's a lot of old school editors out there will find this video very interesting i think, I think they might all right okay well thanks a lot Andre. <laughs> that's all right and uh we'll, we, uh, we will get power you down it. and uh they are noisy those fans they are very noisy right. in fact i'll turn it off and here and, uh, I guess that's... Uh, oh, that's better. All right. Okay. Thanks, Andre. And right. thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode of Camera Peeps.